It is 6.11 a.m. This morning I woke up at 4.57 a.m. Uh, did a bunch of email, did devotions, was looking at my calendar, and I thought today would be a good day to just walk you through my day as I do it without any further delay. A day in the life. Here we go. See, the vast majority of my day is usually spent on Augusta, and Augusta stuff and meetings has a lot of more confidential type things. For example, the other day, one of our franchisees unfortunately lost their father uh, to a heart attack. And so Command Center was stepping in to help run the business. And I'm not gonna show that on a video. We're about three weeks into the spring rush for Augusta Lawn Care and Command Center. So things are really ramped up, but everything's being handled fantastically. We're, mi we're not missing a single call. And uh, I'm really proud of the team over for their work over the past 12 months to departmentalize and just really systematize the entire command center operation. Now recently, I've been trying to improve on my sleep schedule. Instead of going to bed at three and four o'clock, I've been trying my best to go to bed for one and two o'clock. And uh, usually I wake up between five and six pretty much all the time. Basically what I've tried to do is flip my morning schedule. I used to work out in the evening all the time, but the problem with that is that I would eat a big meal and then stay up most of the night. And sometimes my day randomly gets stopped like I just did there where I have to take a call. Me and Matt's always on the case. Come on. 45 minutes, pushing a slide back and forth. Technically this is rest day on built for business. Check it out. I really enjoy workouts where I can just put a podcast, put an audiobook, put a sermon on in my ears, and just for 20 or 30 minutes, kind of blank out. It's very enjoyable. One Zoom call today that I'm not going to be able to share is a venture capital firm that I'm having a call with. I have one of these probably every month, maybe every other month. Why do I do this? Because I have no intention of selling the majority stake ownership of Augusta. The reason I do it is because it's a little bit of 40 chess, and that is Talking to your competition is very difficult to get in for numbers, metrics, and data about them. However, their financiers, they're a little more loose-lipped because they like to use that as information to try to woo me into becoming one of their companies. And so I can ask them specific questions about my competition and they're pretty loose-lipped. So it's just helpful to talk to people who have literally billions of dollars that they can spend and they have a good pulse in the market, but I'll add just businesses that are in that 10 to $20 million range. Then, I don't know if we've submitted this bug yet, George, in terms of the uh, close ratio being way off on the KPIs that we already, basically our, our close ratio was like showing 200% or whatever, which is obviously impossible. Yeah, anything else I wanted to go over? One of the things I'm working on today that is a little bit sensitive is when you're working with team members and with technology coming out that's new or improved or you're trying to make things more efficient, what you don't want to do is um, for them to think that we're somehow trying to outsource their jobs or like that technology is going to you know, make them unemployed. And so as command center, obviously it's a position that as technology improves and there's resources that we can make things cheaper, the thing you want to be careful of is like we will never lay someone off because of technology. There will always be more and the, the goal is to become more efficient so that way we can handle more. And so when we go from 125 locations to a thousand, I'm not going to need to lay anyone off. We're going to get other things to do for the people that do have jobs here and uh, make sure that everyone's just more efficient. And that's the goal. So today I'm making some videos and just kind of sharing my thoughts with some of the leaders at Command and then also with the entire team. So everyone's on the same page and no one's concerned about their job in the future as we try to make things more and more efficient. Okay, so this is for Liz and Brian. I'm just kind of making this about the whole virtual side of things. This document here, I'm gonna share with their experience, with their uh, uh, resumes. This is actually the Zoom call interview that we had with them. Kind of get a feel for them if you'd like, even if it's just a minute or two. Hello, destination, the building super well. Yes, I need you to do X, Y, and Z, but that's like half the amount of importance as, you know, A, B, and C that I want you to do. So, it might just be also clearing your expectations. Oh, uh, so, you know, 
the four hundred and sixty dollars. I need to break down on what they charging me four hundred and sixty dollars for. I need it. I need it cash by cash. I don't understand. They gave me four hundred and sixty dollars and they told me what I was they gonna do, but they didn't give me a breakdown. What do you think? Storyline. Cash by cash. That's the funny part. That's not like what's cash it's by like, cash. I don't really know. Maybe she meant like case by case. But like line item by line item. I could use it as a teaching moment, like what we break down our essence. Like we only will do it by labor and supplies. Just use the first part. She's like, I need to break down a cash by cash. Yep. And like, then I just go right into a teaching moment of like, I'll, I'll refer that right now. A lot of times the customer will ask for a breakdown specifically of the estimate and we're willing to break that into labor and then materials. But when you start going too much deeper than that and breaking apart in really, really fine detail, customers usually get confused and honestly leads to more questions and insurance and all these other things that go into operating a business. All right, so now we're gonna take that to Terrell, give him that for the short. Look at this guy, co-pilot support, printer intact. Let's go. Next up is Anytime Fitness Meeting. I'm late for Once a week we have a team meeting. We're playing, we're not far from the office. Good news, we're very close to 15 or 15,000. Whoa. Our club rank is 101. Let's go. And we're 51 for the month. It's 2,400 in the US. That's what we're in. So we're 51 for the month? Woo, very Because of our attrition job. I was gone, so <laughs> <laughs> you needed more vacation. <laughs> <Nah>, but... <laughs> yeah, this is, they're having me test this thing today out. Okay, now I'm happening on a Zoom call with P4P software development side of things. First interview went pretty good, pretty good. Uh, three more. Um, the interviews for the developers and software engineers take a little bit longer because there's actual technical things we need to go over. These interviews can take 30 to 60 minutes, honestly, if um, we have any interest or that they're going to be a good fit for the team. It's honestly the bigger part, not just the um, technical fit and whether or not they have the skills. So, three more to go. And she said, well, I've always been able to work at every job and work around it. It hasn't been a problem. And then the other lady said she was struggling too when I talked to her this morning. I said, I, I heard a couple of people tell me that you were thinking about not staying. And, you know, if you don't want to stay, then I don't want you to keep working. And I said, well, they feel like if you put the reps in, you can, you can get this. So she wanted to keep trying. I thought you'd been here for like three or four weeks. Three. Oh. It's been a very busy day. I just think it was on this final morning. At the very front of command center here is where we have the metrics up on the board. It goes over how many calls are coming in, average hold time, et cetera. So like, for example, today it's 11 o'clock or so, call the buck, and 100% of the calls have been answered. And there's been 357 inbound calls. Average speed of answer is four seconds. Pretty good day. All right, interview two, pass the vibe check. Unfortunately, I don't know if he has enough experience. We really need someone with quite a bit of experience in this position because we need a, what's called a full stack developer, which means you do everything from front end, back end, UI, UX. Don't know if he'll work out, even though I think he'd be a good fit for the team. And then third individual is no. So one more interview to go. But so far, looks like we'll still be looking unless the fourth one had a lot more experience than was shown on his resume. Just talk about life, about, you know, friends, about women, about exchange. He wants, he's like, he might change my life, and this and that. He's like, when does Mike work out? What time does Mike work out? When does Mike wake up? I said, hey, brother, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I reckon pretty early. Uh, I don't know if he sleeps much. Well, the fourth person interview did not show up. Headed out to go record the C-Suite Unfiltered, but 516 calls. 100% answered. Average speed of answers, four seconds. All right, so I am late. Got to head over and record this C-Suite Unfiltered with Lee Park. Right a little behind. If you haven't subscribed, you should definitely check out the C-Suite Unfiltered podcast. We need a thousand subscribers by conference, so hit it up. Busy day. It's good, dude. You know what's funny is today I think I'm vlogging my day. Oh, cool. Yeah.
Uh, how's that going to incorporate into this? Or are we just going to take? Well, I'm gonna, uh, I'll probably have Kramer like grab a piece of this. Nice, dude. This is a long yes. story. I'm getting there. <laughs> is make the mundane. If you're in a relationship, you got to make the mundane fun, okay. and you got to pick little things to make special right. in your marriage, in your daily life, yeah. right? And so, this is a piece of advice I got from a family friend uh, because he and his wife love baseball. Every opening day, when he comes home from work. He grills hot dogs, she makes an apple pie, and they watch opening day together. <laughs> and so that's what my wife and I are going to do on Thursday. She's going to make an apple pie. I'm going to come home and grill hot dogs. And that is what makes America so awesome. All right. That's a long pod, dude. That's what? like t- over an hour. Yeah. Like and subscribe. <laughs>